it's Kay and Jay. We are in sunny Italy. It is so nice. It's actually the second to last evening here and we're getting ready for dinner. How blonde is my hair right now? I've just washed it, ready for dinner tonight. And I had it bleached before I came away. And with the sun and applying my purple shampoo, like every time I wash it, it is going the most beautiful white blonde and I'm here for it. So I thought, I want to get ready for dinner. Might as well film a video. I'm not really going to talk through the makeup because it's pretty similar to how I normally do my makeup. And I am planning to film a everyday makeup tutorial soon. Probably in the next couple weeks. You guys know, if you're subscribers, if you're not, please subscribe. I have obviously been at uni for the last year. It has not finished for the summer. And I've just been thinking, like, you guys have seen vlogs, but I haven't really actually told you lots about uni. And before I went to uni this year, like for years, I've watched videos by other people, like answering questions, watching moving vlogs, everything like that. And I thought, you know what? It's my time to repay the favor. <sighs> Oh, I just got bit. I am gonna film before the start of the new year, probably the end of August, start of September time. I am gonna film a Q&A about university, answering general questions. I'll ask for some questions over on Instagram. If you've got any questions, drop them in the comments now and I'll come back to this video and check. But yeah, because I just wanna give you guys like advice for uni, maybe you're getting ready to go for uni for the first time, maybe you don't go for a little while longer, maybe you just kind of want to know a bit more. For now, that'll be quite a, like a, obviously it'll be from my experience, but it'll be a quite generic advice. Whereas I thought instead of giving you advice necessarily in this video, I thought I'd just answer a few questions talking about like my uni experience so far. How cute is this sponge? It's from Sheen. A brief rundown. I took a gap year after I finished my A-levels to work. I've got lots of videos talking about that. I worked as a teaching assistant. My course is ending at the University of Central Lancashire, the dance course. The year group I'm currently in is the last year group to go through. Basically, long story short, I managed to get into second year because there is no first year, like my year group is literally the last year group. So I've been at uni now for a year and I've just finished second year of university. I did an accreditation of prior learning in order to skip first year. Well, actually I didn't really skip it. I did it at home in a different way. That is my story. So I've just finished my first year at uni, though I was in second year. So the first question is, did you meet your flatmates before going to uni? I decided to go into student accommodation because even though I was going into second year on my course, like I knew some people at uni from the dance course and from the dance society. I didn't really know that many people. And obviously kind of all my friends were gonna be already in second year. So already with their groups and in their houses and stuff. So I actually decided, you know what? It's my first year, regardless of what year of the course I'm on, I'm gonna go into halls of residence. I'm moving out now. So I lived in Roburn Hall, University of Central Lancashire, for anyone who's like actually interested in, in that uni. So I obviously applied for halls, got accepted for my application. I joined a Facebook group chat, which I think is how kind of university things like that happen a lot, which surprises me because I've never been a Facebook user, but that seems to be how it works. So I joined Facebook group chat, which had everyone that was gonna be in the halls of residence pretty much in it, if you wanted to be in it. You didn't, obviously it didn't have quite everyone if they didn't want to be part of the group chat. And you could basically put in there, I'm in this flat, is anyone else in that flat? And I actually met two people who were my flatmates, one of which is Molly, who was obviously on my channel. I did a flat, like little flat chat video a few months ago and she was in that video and she's from Northern Ireland and I met her and I kind of, we then exchanged details. We could talk away from the big Facebook chat and get to know each other and I got to know her really well. And I also met another flatmate who was actually the flatmate that ended up moving out of our flat partway through the year. But I did meet her before as well. But I didn't know anyone else that was living in my flat. I think I was glad that I knew Molly and the other girl because I felt less anxious 
but I didn't know anyone. So the next question, what happened on move-in day? So I did actually film on move-in day and I have a vlog for kind of move-in day and freshers. Um, but basically, move-in day kind of like, I had to sign up online before the day to say roughly what time I was gonna turn up. I think just so they have an idea, because obviously that's like thousands of people moving in on move-in day. So I was like, yeah, I'm gonna move in roughly around like 9.30 a.m. I took my mum, my dad and my brother, we all went for my move-in day. Arrived and they like told us to park up in the car park and then I went to the front desk like they'd set up like a tent in the middle of the courtyard and we had to take like this document that I'd printed out and ID and stuff and then they gave me my keys and a map and then there were people there helping us to move in. Members of different societies, I think someone from American football actually helped me move in. And members of different societies were in different like accommodation blocks helping people move in with like trolleys and stuff. And basically it was just like back and forth from the car to the flat, moving in all of my stuff. And as you can imagine, I'm sure I had a lot of stuff. Um, my brother helped me build some of the like more furniture bits that I'd taken. My dad went and did some basic shopping for me to put in the fridge. My mum stayed and helped me unpack. So like I'm pretty sure she unpacked my kitchen stuff and then I started unpacking things in my room. At about two, I want to say, roughly, we were like, right, let's go get some lunch. We were all quite tired. And there were different things to see like going on in and around campus as well. To kind of welcome people. We went to Nando's for like dinner and then my parents and my brother had to go because they had to drive the whole way home because um, it was a Sunday, they had to drive the whole way home ready to go back to work and school the next day. So then I was in the flat all by myself. The new flatmates were kind of around. I was there by myself and I just spent the first night unpacking and getting to know my flatmates a little bit. I think I remember we played some card games and yeah, just got to know each other a bit and unpacked our stuff and settled in. So the next question leads on quite nicely because it's how did you deal with being homesick? I feel like I was really lucky because I had Charlie at university with me. We both attend UCLan and he literally lived in the same like accommodation block as me and we're actually living in the same house next year so I feel like with that I was really lucky and also I got on really well with my flatmates. I kind of already had some friends from dance up there. Like don't get me wrong of course I was homesick at times. I really myself busy. I'm one of those people that tries to do everything they can and so really from the moment I got there to the moment I left at the end of the year I was doing something and part of something and that really helped me to not feel as homesick and also to have things at home that I need to go back for every either in reflection weeks or every couple of weeks or a weekend in between so I just kind of would go okay okay you just need to get to whatever weekend it is and then you're going to see your family again and so that was really helped me like okay three weeks and then I'm gonna be with them again. I feel like I actually missed my guinea pig the most. I don't know, cause I FaceTime my mom and dad once a week, every Sunday. I didn't, we didn't want to FaceTime more because actually I think that can make you feel more homesick. Once a week and speak to them and catch up with them. And obviously that was amazing, but they'd show me the guinea pig, but it's not the same as being with your pets. So yeah, I actually think I missed probably missed the guinea pig the most. What societies did you join? Um, in the end, I was only actually part of the dance club and I'm so glad because I had no other time. Because I love dance, I was part of all of the dance teams and therefore every night for hours at a time, I was in dance classes and rehearsals and I wouldn't have it any other way. I loved it. There was a point where I was looking at joining Musical Theatre Society. You guys know I love to sing and also joining the Crochet Society because I love to crochet. But they kind of were always at times I couldn't do and I had to pick what was more important to me and in the end, dance is my happy place. And so I chose to be part of dance club, but realistically dance club at UCLan is every single evening for hours. So it's like being in seven different societies all at once. Can you miss lectures? I mean, you can. I would say my course is much harder to miss a lecture. One, because there's only four of us in my year. So, you know, it's kind of obvious when you're not there. And two, because it's a practical course, we don't have like loads of powerpoints that you can watch back later and kind of 
do it is kind of a bit like you were either there or you weren't and if you miss something you miss something i mean as, as well i was obviously in the second year so it's a bit more difficult missing lectures like don't get me wrong i missed a few different reasons i actually never missed a thursday morning which is the day after a social so go me however i did miss the occasional monday morning because it's monday morning and i was tired god knows why because what was i actually doing i missed a couple when i was ill no, i can't really miss lectures and you know what i was never someone to really miss school i never really had days off school so it's not really abnormal to me to go to my lectures all the time but i know that my flatmates used to miss quite a few lectures obviously they were in first year and they kind of seem to be all right <laughs> whether that will continue this year i don't know did you ever feel like dropping out or was there ever too much work now obviously again I mean, we need to remember that i was in second year not first year where i feel like the general consensus is that it's not that hard um i would say that I can only obviously speak from my experience on the dance course, but I would say that my course is very different to anything I've ever done before. I've never really been in only practical classes all day, every day for a, like a year. That's really brand new to me. So I'd say it was very physically demanding for me, especially because I'd taken a year out. There was a point where there was a bit too much work and that was mainly because the deadlines were kind of all at the same Time and I hadn't done the work kind of little and often that I felt a bit behind and a bit under pressure at times. Never felt like dropping out actually. I go into the studio every day and think how lucky I am to be able to be on that course and with those lecturers and experiencing university there. Never felt like the work was too much. I just felt like I needed to work hard and fast, which is never a bad thing, I don't think. But are you staying in uni accommodation next year? No, I am not. I am living with my current flatmates and Charlie though. They were the people that I wanted to sign my lease with. Found a house for the six of us. So we're staying in a house next year. And the final question is, what are you looking forward to in the next academic year? I feel like, I know it's a long way away, but I will talk about this more in my kind of new year's get ready with me because obviously that's like part way through the academic year i'm looking forward to a lot of things this year i am graduating this academic year coming up so i'm really looking forward to graduation and i will also be applying to a master's degree i'm also looking forward to applying for that this year and hopefully getting in one thing i am really looking forward to this year is dance club and i'm so excited because i was actually elected to be the new chair of the club so excited to be trusted with that responsibility by the club members i have so many ideas as you, i'm sure you can imagine yeah and i just want to continue making the club amazing from where it has already been amazing so far i take over officially with my new committee from august 1st and so i'm just so excited to be able to be part of that and make it a place for anyone and everyone to be part of. If you're coming to UCLan in September, come check out Dance Club. That is all the questions, and I feel like I've given you a pretty good like overview, kind of rundown situation of what uni was like my first year. I definitely want to film that video I was talking about, like answering your questions and more of an advice video. It might even be more than one video. I could even get some other people on to talk to you guys as well if you wanted. So yeah, if you have any questions, DM me on Instagram, let me know in the comments. And yeah, if you did enjoy this video, please give it a big thumbs up and subscribe if you're not already. And I'll see you next time. Bye.